Mitro. Hello everyone. We are talking about the development of external genitalia and in this section we'll cater for what happens when you have to choose pink balloons. I am sure you are as happy as choosing the blue balloons but we'll see the developmental aspects of pink balloons that is what makes the, an indifferent gonad to develop into a female genital tract. This section has been divided into the development of the female external genitalia in which we'll see how or the indifferent gonads form the adult parts of the female reproductive tract. After that we'll see the development of the vestibule of the vagina and finally we'll talk about the labium majora and minora. So in short we'll be dealing with the development of the, rest of the female reproductive tract from an indifferent gonad in the absence of androgens in the presence of female hormones. So now the female genital organs they develop from the indifferent gonad uh, due to the influence of estrogens. So in the male reproductive system there were androgens, in the female reproductive system estrogens play a similar role. So the estrogens they stimulate the development of the female reproductive system and the changes are less extensive as compared to that in the um, males, the adult males. So this is the indifferent gonad. Here you can see uh, this gonad. Uh, the, it has st slightly started differentiation towards the female side. These are the, uh, this is the developing glands clitoris. We'll see how uh, that developed. These are the urethral grooves. These are the labioscrotal folds. Now obviously the labial folds because the scrotum is not required. In the female this is the adult picture which we'll see as the slides proceed so now the genital tubercle it elongates only slightly because there's no uh, it does not require a dramatic elongation as in males it forms a small phallus so this is uh, the genital tubercle which forms a small phallus which bends which actually now bends upon itself to form the clitoris so uh, the phallus it enlarges slightly and bends to form the clitoris. The clitoris, however, does not contain urethra. It's a difference between uh, the male and the female reproductive tract. In the male, the enlarged glands also contain the penile urethra. However, the clitoris does not contain urethra. So now the primitive urethral folds here, these are the urethral folds. They do not fuse and form the labium minora. So uh, these, uh, the primitive urethral folds, they actually fuse in the uh, male, uh, male reproductive system to form the shaft of the penis. However, in here, the primitive urethral folds, they do not fuse and as a result, they uh, help in the formation of labium minora. So the genital swellings now enlarge to form the labium majora. So these in purple are the genital swellings. They enlarge and they form the labium majora. So the labia majora, it fuses with each other posterior to the urogenital membrane. This is the area of the urogenital membrane, but anterior to the anal membrane. This is the area of the anal membrane to form the posterior um, labial commissure. This is the post area of the posterior labial commissure, labial commissure which lies uh, anterior to the anal membrane but posterior to the urogenital membrane. Anal membrane covers the anus and the urogenital membrane lies between the labial folds. So the labial major labia majora also fuses anteriorly to form the mons pubis and the anterior labial commissure. So this is the area where the um, where this labium majora fuses anteriorly and it forms the mons pubis as well as the anterior labial commissure. So the labial labium majora it actually overlaps the labium minora. So um, we see the urogenital membrane again this is the urogenital membrane which is separating the phallic part of the urogenital sinus from the vestibule of the vagina. Obviously, the urogenital membrane is there. It is uh, separating the terminal part of the urogenital sinus, which is the phallic part, from uh, the vestibule of the vagina. Now, it has openings for the urethra, uh, for op openings of urethra as well as the vagina. It, now, after uh, this uh, membrane is erupted, com communicates to the exterior. This is the labium minora. This is the labium ma majora. 
and this is the vestibule of the vagina and here it is in complete communication with the uh, exterior. The labium minora has an outer ectodermal and inner endodermal lining. So this is important. The labium minora has two types of lining, the outer ectodermal and inner endodermal. So this was how the female reproductive uh, system comes into development. We saw the in different gonad was under the influence of estrogens to uh, develop in towards the pink line, that is towards the pink balloon line, the female reproductive tract. In the female reproductive tract, we saw how the glands that actually uh, does not undergo dramatic enlargement but a small enlargement and bends upon itself to form the clitoris then the urethral folds they do not fuse and they form the uh, labium minora then the genital swellings they actually enlarge to form the labium majora uh, in the anterior aspect the labium majora they converge upon each other to form the um, Mons pubis as well as the anterior labial commissure. Similarly, it, uh, the labium majora also uh, comes to lie together in the posterior section to form the posterior labial commissure. Then we finally saw how this uh, uro how the urogenital sinus after the rupture of the urogenital membrane opens into the vestibule of the vagina and how it communicates to the exterior through the labium minora and labium majora. So I hope you understood this section and you have a grasp on how the development of the female reproductive tract goes on. For further such sections keep watching scardia.com.